crystal with crystallrsimpson.com. I, I hope that you enjoy this format. I tried something a little new so that I could share my screen and still be able to see you um, as I share what God put on my heart this week to write on the blog. So the actual title of this blog post was called, Do You Have Religion or a Relationship with God? So a long time ago, people used to say they had religion. I don't think they say that anymore, but instead we do say things like, I'm a Catholic or I'm a Baptist or some other denomination. Having a relationship with God is not the same thing as having a religion. God wants to have a personal relationship with all of his children, regardless of where they go to church. So do you have religion or a relationship with God? Let's take a closer look. So we enter into a personal relationship through his son, Jesus Christ. Our faith in Jesus introduces us to God the Father. Because of the sin, of course, that Adam and Eve committed, God went through great lengths to allow each of us a chance to fix the severed relationship that we had with God. Of course, you know, we had no way of getting to God, but he loved us so much that he let his righteous son suffer and die for us. So the first Peter, actually the third chapter 18, first says, for Christ also suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Of course, Jesus was righteous and he took our place as we were unrighteous to bring us to God. So Jesus made the first move. And now each of us have to decide how to respond. Each person has to choose whether or not they're going to accept Jesus' offer of reconciliation to God. And Jesus allows us to mend our godly relationship. But his invitation is not to a religion, but an opportunity to have a relationship with a holy God. So a relationship with God is personal. Think about the connection uh, with your spouse or your significant other. These are personal relationships that start and evolve. And each of us, of course, has a different story about when we began our relationship. So, for example, couples have differing stories about where they met their partner or who introduced them and how the relationship actually evolved. And a relationship with God, of course, is similar. Each of us should have a strong story regarding when we began to have a personal relationship with God. For relations are like journeys, and of course, no two journeys are ever the same. A personal relationship with God is individualized. So when and how we decided to follow Christ is different. Each person should have a testimony that describes when and how the relationship has changed them. For some, they decided to accept Christ at church, and some made this decision in a hospital bed or in a prison cell. After deciding to follow Christ, some people never stumbled or looked back. Others had more of an on-again, off-again relationship until they finally made a permanent decision to change. Life is a journey. Grow through it. So when we decide to follow Jesus, he leads us individually to the end goal that he has in mind for our lives. He doesn't want us to judge each other because, of course, we all work out our own salvation. And even though our journeys may be different, we all should be pursuing a relationship with God. And that requires, of course, making changes. Our relationship with Jesus is life-changing. He loves us and helps us in every area, which results in the needed changes when we accept his assistance. So what does it mean to have religion? Well, religion means that you do some of the things that are associated with the church, but in, your heart may not be in it. So a religious person might pride themselves on being a good representative in the church. They may attend services weekly. They may send their kids to Christian schools or even homeschool them. And they may even say churchy things. But this religious person doesn't necessarily feel, they feel like they have to do religious acts, but they may not personally feel connected to Jesus or God.
Religion is based on things that you do or do not do. A relationship is based on your heart. So let's go back to the spouse significant other uh, analogy. If your spouse only does things like take out the trash or cook dinner, but is not invested in the relationship with their heart, well, this would be problematic. So how do you think God feels when he sees us being too busy for a relationship with him? So let's look at what makes a good relationship. Any stable relationship contains five markers, commitment, love, trust, communication, and respect. So all good personal relationships begin with the individual decision to be committed. Jesus committed to us and demonstrated that love by coming to earth to reconcile us to God. Now we have to make the decision to define our relationship with Jesus. Jesus wants to have a relationship with us. And the first step is to create a commitment. Just like we had to decide to get serious with our spouse, we must become exclusive with Jesus. Next, a good relationship requires love. You know, nothing matters at all in a relationship except love. Jesus tells us to love God and others. It doesn't matter if you carry your Bible everywhere you go or whether you quote scriptures or even whether you go to church every single day. What matters is whether you show love. So, of course, the Bible has a scripture that says in 1 Corinthians 13, 2, And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So love is so important, of course, to God that Jesus explains to us that all the commandments, they describe who and how we should love. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So all the commandments basically come down to love. It's just that important. From Matthew 22, 37 to 39. So thirdly, the good relationship requires communication. Communication is synonymous with prayer and study in the Bible. So if we seek to have a personal relationship with God, we need to communicate with him. We talk to God in our prayers and he speaks to us through his word. If we're not praying or reading and studying the word, then we end up with a communication breakdown. Fourth, the good relationship requires trust. We have to trust that God is real, hears us when we pray, and will do what he has promised. We are not able, of course, to see God or Jesus with our physical eyes, but we need to trust. This trust requires faith. In any good relationship, you should be able to believe that the person who loves you will do what they promise, even when they're away from your sight. Of course, your spouse promised or vowed to love, honor, cherish, but God has promised even more. We simply need to trust him. Lastly, a good relationship requires respect. Ultimately, our relationship with Jesus leads us to the Father and allows us to become children of God. The Bible is clear that you cannot become a child of God without receiving and believing in his son. The Bible in John 1st chapter 12 verse says, but as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. And John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Just don't think it gets any clearer than that. So God is the good Father. He's worthy of our respect as our Heavenly Father. We look to him for guidance and wisdom and provision and protection. And he doesn't want to be one of many choices. He tells us that very clearly. We must decide to choose God as our father through acceptance of his son or whether to remain lost, trusting in our own ability or the enemy's schemes. So let's think about a prayer. I wrote a prayer, of course, to strengthen our relationship with God. We all need a stronger relationship with God, not more religion. 
We need to be able to hear his voice and do what he says. We all have gifts and talents that he has blessed us with, and we all should be willing to use them for his glory. Let's pray a prayer to strengthen our relationship with God. Heavenly Father, I bow my head in reverence with thanksgiving in my heart. You are almighty. You have created everything in this world with your powerful words. You are holy, good, and your words are life to my soul. Father, if I have committed any sins, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me and help me to do better. I want my life to bring you glory and honor, and I ask you to help me. I pray for a stronger relationship with you, God. I have accepted the gift of salvation by believing in Jesus. I know that I am a child of God, but I want to go deeper. I ask you to grow my faith even more. Please speak to me in a way that you know I will hear you best. I do not want to put my trust in my ability or in anything but you, Lord. You have blessed me with many gifts and talents, and I want to use them for your kingdom. I commit to learning more of you. As I pray this prayer, speak into my heart. I'm so thankful for my journey with you. As I look at my life, I know that your love and word have changed me. I trust that you can continue to teach me and guide me daily. I surrender to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I hope you've enjoyed this content. I hope you've enjoyed this blog post. Of course, you know, I try to write a new blog post each week at crystallrsimpson.com. If you want to make sure you don't miss the post, be sure to go there, fill out the, the name and email, and I'll make sure that you are subscribed so that you never miss a post. Thanks for tuning in. Be blessed in Jesus' name.